Hello there, fellow responsibly armed Americans. My name is Tim Schmidt, AKA Tactical Tim. This week's video is uh, going to be answering a question that I hear a lot. Uh, sometimes I come in on email, sometimes I come in um, on the phone. Um, and it emanates from the fact that you guys all hear me talk about how it's important to be a responsibly armed American. So the question is, Tim, what does it take to be a responsibly armed American? What do you mean by responsibly armed American? Um, that is a very good question, and I've broken it down into four answers. So there's four parts to the answer. So number one, this is probably the most obvious one, but number one, you have to make the decision. Um, I can specifically remember back when I was, you know, it was over 10 years ago when I was kind of going through the process of deciding that, holy cow, hey, I need to carry a gun. And um, kind of like in, in other aspects of my life, I just dove right in, and I, there was no turning back. Because I guess what I'm getting at is you can't go halfway. This isn't a hobby. This isn't a fun thing to do. I mean, it is fun, but it shouldn't be treated as such. Being armed is, is very serious. It carries a tremendous amount of responsibility. And so therefore, you can't just go halfway. You can't go, you can't mess around. So you have to make the decision and to commit to, to really complete the next three steps. So that's step number one, make the decision, commit. Number two is training. Now I want you to think about training the same way that you eat, same way that you sleep, in the sense that you have to do it all the time. You can't just do it once and say, hey, I had a, had a great meal. I'm good. I'm good for the eating thing for the next couple of years. That's crazy, right? Um, same thing with the sleeping. I don't know about you guys, but I sleep every single night. So training needs to be treated the same way. You need to develop a consistent, regular training program. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to go to the range every single day, but you should go to the range on a regular basis. I know a lot of people that go weekly, and I think that's fantastic. Um, and you know, if, if you're in a situation where you just can't go weekly, you should at least practice dry fire training on a weekly basis. So training isn't just about quality. Of course, you do need to be taught uh, proper technique. You need to, 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 to practice drills that are valuable and worthwhile, that actually simulate real world scenarios. But you also have to do the, quant the quantity, you know, the repetition over and over and over. Because as we all know, at the end of the day, when the shit hits the fan, you're, you're going to revert to your lowest level of training. So, number one, make the decision, commit. Number two, get good quality and quantity of training. Item number three is safety. Now, some of you may be rolling your eyes, and, and I'm kind of rolling my eyes myself, because I know that some of you guys, if there's any liberals watching this, they're probably thinking, oh, good, Tim's going to talk about trigger locks. That's crazy. I don't believe in that crap. Um, trigger locks are safety for the people that don't understand gun safety. When I talk about gun safety, I'm talking about making sure your mind's sharp and understanding that that's the number one safety uh, tool that you can have, right? You follow the four rules of gun safety and you're going to be fine. It's impossible to have a negligent discharge. Now that extends to your family as well, in the sense that, you know, when I taught the Schmidt kids, my kids are a little bit older now, but when they are young kids, when they are four, six, and eight years old, I set them down at my kitchen table and actually, we introduced them to guns, and we went, eventually went, and got, went shooting guns. And so that's how you teach gun safety. You teach your kids to respect guns, and to understand the danger, and to understand that, hey, this isn't some no, you know, crazy novelty thing. They're just a tool. They're a, dangerous, they're a tool that can be dangerous, just like fire, right? So, and the neat thing about that is when you teach your kids that way, now that knowledge and that understanding and that respect for firearms that follows them with them when they go to the parents' house who think that if they just put a little trigger lock on a gun, it's all safe. That's crazy. So, um, and of course, it also follows through with them for the rest of your life. So the last thing is mindset. Probably the, one of the most important, but having the proper mindset to be a responsibly armed American is, is the fourth kind of component, the fourth pillar of this responsibly armed American thing. I'm talking about understanding preparedness understanding awareness and understanding the importance of, of rehearsing scenarios in your mind so that when the actual scenario occurs, you know exactly what to do. So preparedness, obviously that goes without saying, just you know, being prepared is, an ounce of preparedness is worth, what do they say, a pound of cure, blah, 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 all that stuff. <laughs> but, um, but the awareness aspect of it, I mean, we all know Colonel Cooper's uh, four, colors, uh, four color codes of awareness. You know, living your life in, 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 uh, in, in the yellow zone really earns you the ability to experience the orange zone and then probably you won't even have to experience the red zone. If you live in the white zone, look friend, you're not even going to experience the yellow or the orange. You're going to go right into red because you weren't paying attention. So live in yellow, be aware of your surroundings, it'll allow you to avoid all of the crap that you want to avoid anyway. So in conclusion, 
Make the decision, commit. Number two, training, quality and quantity. Number three, safety. And I'm not talking about the BS safety crap about putting locks on guns and storing the ammo 10 miles away from the gun. That's, you might as well just melt your gun down into, into steel. I'm talking about real safety, which is in your head and the way you teach your kids. And lastly, I'm talking about mindset, preparedness, awareness, and mental rehearsing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, about, I'm sorry that this tactical team was a little bit more of a rant than most of them, but it's important that, 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 that I'm sure that some of you out there got some value out of this, and, and, and so that's good. Uh, I guess the one last thing I'll say is, is um, for, for a lot of you, you're probably thinking, hey, wow, Tim's doing these videos every single week, and that's true. So you know, from here on out, for the rest of my life, I'm going to be doing Tactical Tim videos every single week, and I have an ongoing bet with the editor of Concealed Carry Magazine, Kevin Michalowski, because he's doing a, a weekly blog post as well now, that mine are going to be better than his. So what I want you to do is put a little comment down here, and, and if, you know, if you liked what I said, that's great. If you didn't like, you can comment there. You know, if, you, if you work for a company that makes uh, gun trigger locks, I'm sure you didn't like what I said, and you can write it there, but still say that, and Tim, your video is much better than Kevin Michalowski's. I'd really appreciate that. Um, that's it for today. Take care and stay safe.